Okay, so we're live. Good morning, everyone, on this beautiful spring morning. Um, we're going to leave the camera on these beautiful flowers for now, give you one or two minutes to join the session. But yeah, see you in a minute. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, that has been a lovely couple of minutes of looking at this bed here, which is actually looked after by Julie, who's a regular member of the garden group. And I think it's safe to say that it, she's done a pretty brilliant job because it looks spectacular. It looks spectacular every year. It's beautiful. A lot of you will have been greeted as you come into Hollybush by this bed. And it's definitely making me feel like it's spring looking at this can we look at the top of some of these flat like look at them yeah, from the top in the, you can see the i don't know if you can quite see but the pollen on these oh yeah there you go so the black pollen on there oh wow really beautiful so good morning i am <laughs> alex behind the camera you can hear me and i'm Freya, and we're part of the green gym team in tcv leeds at, today we're at hollybush yeah. conservation center in kirkstall and yeah, we're just going to be taking you through the Hollybush Garden in spring and talking about some of the things that you can do, some of the things that you can see if you go out and for a walk. And also for people that haven't been able to come to Hollybush for a little while, just showing you what it's looking like, showing you how it is doing, looking at this beautiful flower here. Yeah, so as <laughs> been requested many, many weeks on the trot here, we now have microphones, so we hopefully microphones. you can hear us a lot better. We're still, it's the first time we've used them, so if there are any tef technical difficulties, please excuse our dust. But yeah, hopefully you'll be able to hear as we chat about some lovely spring things today. Yeah. They're just going to look at flowers loads. Yeah, pretty and... much. I mean, that's what, when you think of spring, what are the things you think of? To me, it's, you know, little yeah. baby bunny rabbits, little chicks and um flowers that's that's pretty yeah. much it lots of greenery so spring starts some people say it starts at the start of march some people say it starts on the 21st of march so the 20th of march is that is when it starts on the start of march that's meteorological spring so march april may then the astronomical spring is from the equinox so the equinox is the 21st 22nd of 
March. And that is the day of the year where the night is the same length as the day. So the night is 12 hours long and the day is 12 hours long. And after the equinox, it's definitely officially spring. So that was a week or just over a week ago now. And it's feeling an awful lot like spring. And it's the time that you can really start to do a lot in your garden. The weather's improving. I think with the clocks changing last weekend and it being British summertime, it's, you may have noticed the evenings have got loads lighter. It's still light at 8 p.m. now, which when you think about a month ago, it's yeah, I remember when pretty it, amazing. When I was a kid, the bedtime was sort of half seven, eight, and going to bed when it was still light was upsetting. But... <laughs> As an adult, now I can stay up when I want. <laughs> Usually, it's still around sort of nine o'clock. Because we're so. grown ups. <laughs> yeah, shall we? So, this is Judy's bed. So, there's some really, like, so very wide variety of things in there. Daffodils, I mean, tulips. Things it's like not that. a sign of spring, but for people that are familiar with the Hollybush oh, sites, yeah. this is pretty exciting. So, we've had our car park is now complete. We've got lots of accessible parking. Which is amazing. Hopefully the congestion in the car park will be resolved. Yeah, so part of getting ready for spring is that we are actually getting ready to open up again at Hollybush. Um, we're going to start running some activities on a small scale. So, yeah, the site's coming back to life and all of you will soon, or some will get the chance to come and have a look. This is one of the big signs of spring, isn't it? We've got the daffodils here. So... Oh, do you want to yeah, I mean it? these are very these are classic sort of I don't know, in my eyes St David daffodils. Like these are what you think of when you think of daffodils. A beautiful yellow. Yeah, um, we've got the alkanets coming out. So we talked about last time the snowdrops, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And snowdrops are a winter flower, so they come out when there's still snow on the ground. It's still winter, the sort of January February time. But now they've kind of gone away. You can see it's getting to the point, but the things like, so this is our rose. It's time to stop doing things like pruning the roses. So we did the live stream on how to prune apple trees and pear trees a few weeks ago. And if they've not come into full bud, you might just still get away with it. But it really is time to be stopping doing jobs like pruning apples and pear trees. But and also things like roses. Oh. Oh, yeah, look at that. these oh i love my job <laughs> yeah i mean it, it amazes me this is a hell of a horse and things, conversation yeah. we were having earlier was i think this time of year is such a hopeful time of year because you can go outside and see something completely new every time you go out and just the colors Absolutely amazing. So what did you say this, this was called again? Hellebore. Hellebore. Beautiful, beautiful plant. And if any of my um, Lovell Park volunteers are watching, unfortunately, we, we, we got a bit of pot of money to buy loads of flowers just before the lockdown. And this was one of them that we bought. We put this out by the seating area outside. So hopefully it survived the quite hot summer last year. I'm thinking it probably did. Yeah, we, I think pretty we watered tough. them when we established them. So hopefully, but something to look forward to. Got the amazing colours on these primulas. Yeah, I mean the camera just does not do these colours justice. They're so vibrant that the camera is having a hard time picking it up. So on my screen, this looks very scarlet, but to the naked eye, it looks it's it's like a I don't know what sort of colour you'd call this, like a almost magentary. Yeah. That's the colour I had in my head, so like, yeah, let's say magenta. Like deep, deep magenta, really beautiful, but on the camera it just looks scarlet. So if you, if you do have access to a, an area where you can go out and see the flowers, do go and see them for yourself, because yeah. I mean, look beautiful. at this bit. So yeah. These ones here, yeah, they look almost the same on the camera, but these ones here are a bit more scarlet coloured. Really bright red, aren't they? Mm. Which for all the pollinators that are now sort of active again, these colours, as we were saying before, like the, the reds and the bright yellows and reds, 
are very attractive. You can see how the middle of it is yellow. If you ever go outside with a yellow t-shirt on, oh, yeah. you will get absolutely swarmed by lots of tiny little beetles and flies. If you're near sort of an oilseed rape field, mm -hmm. those yellow flowers, they get um, these little pollen beetles. And yeah, if you wear yellow anywhere near one of those fields, you just get covered in these tiny beetles. You... High-vis jackets that you wear yeah. for um, yeah, cycling. Yeah. But you can see here, the outside is red, so that, that gets attention. But then the middle there is yellow, like a, like a, a bullseye on a darts board, saying this is the good bit. This is where you want to go. So the red gets the attention, and the yellow is like, this is exactly where all of my And you get really is. cool sort of UV images of when they filter yeah. out the lights for the different... Because we've got human eyes that can see the colours that humans see. Beetles don't see that way. And they... Yeah, you get these sort of images where they've messed around with the light frequency that show how how insects might see it. We've also got things like the jack by the head, the garlic mustard here. So while flowers are starting to spring up, oh, it smells really good. It's also the time that sort of things that you can forage, like things that are edible in the wild, uh, that you might, if, you're only for, if you know what you're talking about and if you know what you're identifying, but if foraging is something you're into, a lot of things will say that when the leaves are young and when the leaves are fresh. So this is the time of year when they've not built up sort of the waxy membranes on them. So the leaves are really soft. So this is the ideal time if you're wanting to go out and forage some things that you know what they are to go and do that. And yeah, I've made if, my... if, if, you're, if you don't, please don't go out after this live stream today and start eating everything Look you can see. Guys. But yeah. Um, I have a consult, an expert. Um, yeah, we're not condoning just going out and eating whatever you find. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got lots of different cultivars of daffodils, so lots of different varieties. I mean, this one's amazing. It looks like a... The camera picks up quite well, that, that yellow yeah. hole in the middle. Of, it's, it's, yeah, like a, a beautiful, like, linen white yeah. colour petal. Yeah. And then the middle is like a, a yellow... Yeah. signal saying come in here i mean look at it from that sort of angle it just it looks like a fairy dress or something doesn't it like, they, kind <laughs> or of like a, a... an aristocrat's collar like a, a really like a pirate collar <laughs> 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 i'm sure that's what they thought when they were like developed that variety <laughs> yeah just looking at the variety of again so vibrant it's the it? middle of the flower bright yellow um, oh, I think we should not overlook our friend back oh, yeah. here. So here you go. Here's the flower that everybody thinks is a weed. But I'm not everybody. Well, okay, a lot of people think is a weed, but actually, I think there's a lot. There's a lot of like social media push at the moment for people to not head their dandelions in their garden yeah. when they're doing the grass cutting because they're especially at this time of year. I mean, go right really in it and just important. look at the patterns in it and just how beautiful. They are as a flower. I just absolutely love them because, okay, you might not want them in your flower border in your veg patch. I'd take them out of there. But if you've got a lawn, they're one of the first signs of spring. They, they grow in places that loads of other things won't grow. And they're just so determined to tell you that spring's happening. They're one of the first flowers that comes out at the start of spring. So one of the first things that can feed the early pollinators. So we'll have a little bit more of a look at bees later. But as we get start to get these warm, sunny days, the bees are coming out and there's not necessarily that many flowers around at the very start of spring. And dandelions are a great early source of pollen and nectar for the bees to eat. Oh, just look at every single one, every again, single flower. What's the interesting fact about dandelions? They're not one flower, are they? No, so each petal is actually a tiny little flower and that's true for a lot of things in the daisy so it's part of the daisy family like sunflowers and daisies and each of the petals within one of those is its own flower so they're like a compound is it compound yeah flower? Compound, that's yeah, the word yeah. isn't it yeah and you can eat they're edible like you can eat the, you can make sort of coffee substitute out of the root and dandelion they, and burdock you can make um dandelion and burdock yeah you can make dandelion honey which is sort of an, a honey substitute and yeah, they're just great. They're just beautiful as well. Last year when the council delayed cutting the grass on the parks because of COVID and lockdown starting, 
they the grass around me was just this sea of dandelions and they cut it before they went to seed but it was just absolutely beautiful like the whole the whole of the area was just yellow with these flowers and i think it's great oh morning martin earl oh good, good morning. morning martin how are you good to hear from you oh that's something we didn't actually say so if you have any comments questions or you just want to say hello do these guys out. ignore the fact that we've got all of this stuff here. excuse the dust yeah i think yeah <laughs> we're building some new storage so we've got all of the stuff sort of moved out here but yeah do ask questions in the comments and we'll try and answer them this one here looks like a Almost looks like it's on fire, like the colours of that. It looks like it's been charred in the middle. Really yeah. beautiful. Oh, wow. Is that the pollen on the middle then? I think it? so. I think it's the, the, the pollen has... These opened up a bit earlier, I think, and the pollen spread. Oh, that's so... Should well, we we're hoping. Oh, should we... We can go around that way, yeah. Have yeah. a look at the flowering current. Mm -hmm. Look at that guy. We're hoping that the microphones will be able to pick up the sound of the bird song as well because up in the woods there's the road the cars are less exciting but we've got all of the sounds of the birds and things as they're building their nests that it's we're properly into nesting season so this is a really important thing to yeah well look at the flowering car currents while i talk about how yeah the birds are nesting and actually it's actually from the first of march until the end of august that you need to be really careful if you're doing any work in your garden if you're doing any cutting back of hedges if you're cutting back trees or just general maintenance it's actually illegal to disturb nesting birds and you just need to make sure that anything you do isn't going to knock some eggs or damage a, be a nest that they're building so yeah this is the flowering currants they're not the ones that you get your fruit off but they are something that's just beautiful in a hedgerow you get I them wish, in different colours and things. I wish we had smell of vision because the smell here, this is spring to me, that smell of pollen. Oh, yeah. Where it's just that, that almost overwhelming sort of sweet, earthy pollen smell. Really, really yeah. beautiful. So it is the time of year where you might start to get your hay fever. Yeah, my nose, again. <laughs> my nose is getting a bit itchy. So they have said that apparently there's been a large people wearing masks and things has really been mm. helping people with their hay fever. Oh, we can walk these guys. There's just flowers everywhere. Like everywhere you look, there's just things sneaking through. They're just sort of hidden away. Like if, if we did have, so humans have a UV filter over our eyes that other animals don't. And if we didn't have that, looking at this patch here, if I go away, that just looks green from the camera. You can see, and the closer you get, look these beautiful deep purples in there but it's if awesome. we were stood here without the uv filter on our eyes you'd be able to see little purple spots everywhere i mean like just, it, when you look in closer it's worth just taking the time to notice these things yeah like these tiny little flowers because yeah they're easy to walk past but when you actually start walking around and doing something like this oh, here you go. on this one here we do have so when people think of pollinators they think of butterflies and bees but on this one here yeah. If the camera decides, no, it's flown away. So there's tiny little insects that are also really important pollination. Um, and to be honest, with these tiny little flowers, it's the smaller beetles and flies that do a better job. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, with the amount of flowers on this, you could probably sustain a few bees anyway off that one bush. Yeah, and this is all, this one flowers. that's good at producing little red little berries that are really good mm. for birds to eat as well. So it's important to leave the flowers so that the, the um, berries set in. So this is it. we moved these currants the other week. So this is edible currants. These are black currants, and you can see that they're starting to send out the sprouts. They're not sending out much new growth yet, but they're coming into leaf. So this is it. You wouldn't want to... Now these are in leaf and the leaves have opened up. You wouldn't want to be pruning these. Mm. We gave these a prune a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't watch that live stream, go back a couple of weeks to watch the pruning one. And you will see these bushes. They were barren sticks almost they had buds but they did not look anything like this and we transplanted them after the live stream and it looks like 
They've got the little flowers in here as well. I don't know if these these aren't quite big enough to see the ovum at the back. Oh, you sort of can. So if you look, mm, can you? These. Let's try and find the something. Can... <laughs> we'll go. We'll have a look at. They're very small. So we bought the microphones. The next thing to buy is a, a Mac three lens. grand camera to do it with. <laughs> well done. No, it's just a fuzzy blur. Oh, there you go. So you can see the front sort of enlarged bit is where the petals are stored. And then at the back, you can kind of see a smaller lump, and that's the ovum. So that's the, the female part where it will eventually turn into the fruit. What is this one a black currant? I think, yeah, that yeah. one is. And that's it. So the flower at the front is where the bees bring in the pollen. But then that little thing at the back, that becomes the fruit. So the flower will die away. And if you think about that little star bit at the end of an apple, that's where the flower was. And the apple is just the back of that. You can see that the garlic's coming up, the broad beans are coming up, the bindweed's coming up. So this is when we are starting to get our weeds coming through. So these little ones. And just start, well, get getting rid of as much of them as you can as it comes and they're not for compost so you want to put you want to put that in a barrel to dry or drown yeah and to be honest like putting it on some pavings like that mm -hmm. will dry out on a day like this quite quickly what did i just see oh yeah there's a bit of clay pipe there that's from an old smoking pipe so this is probably one of the coolest flowers it's in the so entire good. world this is a snake's head for thread. Uh, there, say the word. Snake's head fritillary. Frati I can't say that word. Fritillary. Fritillary. Is the um, oh, and, speaking. Oh, the camera's not behaving. Oh, there you go. So it's, amazing. it's amazing. Like again, the camera is not doing it justice. If you, if you're lucky enough to, to come and visit Holly Bush in the future when we have these out, or if you know of you've got some in your own garden, definitely just go check them out. I could stare at these for a good sort of half an hour. They're absolutely amazing, aren't they? Like just they just don't look real. They look like it looks like a texture. Like it looks like CGI. Like it's a flower, and then someone's just put a matte texture on it. Like yeah. It doesn't look real. Are they native? Are they UK native? I don't know. That's <laughs> a fact check for Hazel in the comments. I think they might be. I don't know. I've never seen the other side and be very. There's a lot of our flowers. Like a lot of our spring yeah. flowers. Like uh. Um, snowdrops and things snowdrops and crocuses and things have come or winter flowers those are but they've come from the Himalayas haven't they mm. so a lot of them are introduced that we kind of think of as this yeah like Himalayan balsam <laughs> oh, so we've got our prim primula back there oh. the... oh you can see so we've moved the bird table but you can see that the birds definitely <laughs> enjoy this area <laughs> while we had the bird table look so bird poo is not necessarily the most attractive thing but it is a good sign good thing to look out for um have a look at this how could you not like that flower like that looks glorious yeah the dandelion there oh. should we go we can go that way or we can go in and there it's up to you yeah i'm thinking of the marshmallow oh, yeah no yeah yeah so if you watched our Make Your Pond at Home live stream, we mentioned a few flowers that would be really good to put around the edge of your little pond. And this one here is the Marsh Marigold. And you can see the pollinators absolutely love it. It goes really nice on the edge of a pond. Um, we have some hoverflies. And again, that beautiful, bright yellow. So back almost a year ago, we did a live stream on the meadow at Skeleton Grange where we caught some hoverflies and other little pollinators. Um, I'm thinking we should probably do another one of them again. Um, just because it's a nice, nice thing to do. So we've now, we've also... 
people may have seen we've put stuff up about the frogs coming now. Frogs have started spawning. We're getting into the time when, ooh, is it, it's frogs then toads then newts, isn't it? Is it or is it newts then toads? I don't know. <laughs> so they don't all spawn at the same time. So we're kind of, it's now your frog spawn will be starting to hatch. You'll be getting your tadpoles. I don't know if I've got any in here. There's definitely lots of life going on, though, isn't there? We've got the boatman, we've got the yeah. skater. Hey, little guy. Yeah. Some, it's a water beetle. There is something in the pondweed under there that's moving around, but I can't quite pick it up. It might be, we have had some baby frogs in here um, that were hibernating from last year, and I think they're starting to come out again. Yeah. So they're still really small because they were hibernating all winter. Um, Still, sort of, I don't know, no bigger than your thumb. Yeah, and the science, so you'll have had the frog spawn, which is the sort of big blobs of bubbles with black spots in that most people are familiar with. That's frog spawn. But you get the toad spawn, which I can't, I don't think we can see any, but it's sort of, it's long strings of similar stuff. So it, they just form like these strings that suspend in the water, under the water. They are harder to spot, but oh, there's a caddis, there's a dragonfly nymph down there. I don't know if the camera's going to be able to pick it up. Well, I can just see my reflection in the water. <laughs> <laughs> we shade it. There you go. So that is a dragonfly larvae in the centre of the screen right now. Yeah. They are pretty much an apex predator in the water. We've talked about them. They eat everything. Talked about them at length. You know. Oh my gosh! There's a new. Oh there? yeah. Got newt? There we go. So that's a new. <gasps> hey, Absolutely guy. amazing. Oh, uh, little lady, that'll be. That's a female one. That'll be a female smooth newt. I think that's what I saw earlier. Is it? Brilliant. So that means they are active, so they're coming out in the warm weather. They'll be prepping to breed. So saying it's the long, thin strands of spawn that is toads. Newts, actually, they kind of fold it up with their back legs in leaves. So they make these... If you, you'll sit... Then it's hard to spot, but if you know what you're looking for, you can see it. And they like, they lay, oh, there's another one over there. Uh, can you see that one? No. Uh, it's just sort of, it's just, so the newts are active. They're coming out in the sunshine. That's probably one of the best. And yeah, they just, spring. they sort of, so what they do is they sort of lay, they get, they lay their egg on the leaf and then sort of with their back legs, they sort of fold it over, sort of like that mm. to, and like, so you get like the, all these little folded bits of leaf and that's got little bits of spawn under it. So, yeah, the newt one is the harder one to spot. And again, we talked about how you don't want to be cleaning your ponds out at this time of year. This is the exact reason. I don't think I've looked in a less than a square foot of water and ever seen so much life. Um, yeah. yeah. And as a, if you've got sort of blanket weed and things, you're actually more likely to spread it further if you try and take it out so it's a tricky thing as you can see we've got this duckweed so this is our duckweed that's starting to so that forms like a white a, a green mat right across the top so you do want to make sure you're kind of clearing areas of that so light can get through to the oxygenators so these plants down here put the oxygen in the water so that the life in the pond can breathe mm -hmm. so you do want to try and clear the surface so the light's getting through but Shall it's just we... a tricky balance. And I think somehow that someone has done some clearing, but if you do clear it, just make sure you're putting anything you take out right on the water's edge. And that means anything that is alive in it can get out and get back in the water. It gives them a better chance. It's not a guarantee that they will, but it gives them a better yeah. chance. Avoid of it back. if you can. Um... Yeah, so. Oh, here you go. So the apple trees we were pruning as well have started to. Right out. Yeah. So this one, that one's definitely, when they've opened up the leaves like that, you don't want to be pruning it. So we're at this time of year where some different varieties of apple, that you get different varieties that come back to life at different stages. So this one, the leaves have now opened. You wouldn't prune this one. Like you've missed the boat this year, basically. Unless it's really damaged and it's going to do more damage to the tree by leaving it in which case 
just take it off. But then if you turn around to the, this one behind you. Oh, yeah, there you go. So this where one is the leaves barren. haven't opened up yet. So they are coming, there's buds on it, but they've not opened. So you could still get away with pruning this one, but I would do it as soon as you can. Mm. Um, uh, really quick update from Hazel. There is only one native fritillary. Is there? Um, gosh, this has got a very <laughs> hard to pronounce Latin name. Uh, fritillary melig meligris, something like that. Meligris Share meligaris. a picture with us. Um, so then we're coming around. To, so this is our plum. This is a Victoria plum we've got here. And this is coming into bud. So we did about the pruning of the apples and the pears and the sort of that sort of fruit with the pips and the cores. But like things with stones, so that's your plums, your green gauges, your apricots, stuff like that. Um, where if you've eaten them, you're familiar with the stone in the middle. You actually, this is now coming in. You don't want to do them any sooner than April. So this plum we've not pruned yet, but we will prune it in the next month. Um, you want to do it in spring. Um, you don't need to do as precise a thing as you do with the forming of the apple trees, but you do want to kind of keep a more vase shape. So we will want to take this one down a bit lower, but it's much less of a precise job than apple pruning mm. but yeah if you shouldn't prune them any earlier than this because i stone fruit are really susceptible to rots and things so by doing it in winter you're increasing the risk of rots getting in so yeah you've not missed the boat on plums uh, impressive crown of daffodils there yeah and this is our um medlar tree which is yeah. coming it's great it's just such a beautiful tree, isn't it? <laughs> Shall we have a wander up into the woods to look at some yeah, I think woods so. in spring? I'll come past So the... here you go. We've got a few viewers in at the moment doing some spring cleaning. We've got Nige and Charlie here having a so wonderful they're... spring fire as well. Preparing oh, the Bodger's Hut. Today. Preparing the Bodger's Hut for people that are familiar with mm -hmm. it. That We're preparing this for... Give us an extension. You're building, an, building extension. an extension. Tell us a little bit more about your spring cleaning that you're doing, Nige. <laughs> I think. Creating a new floor. Creating yeah. a new floor. There, we scrap it here, dry. Mm -hmm. We're going to sort all this wood out. That's going to be sheltered. We're going to put a tarp over it so it stays dry. So we can use that as a working space. That's the okay. idea. Instead of storage space. So the Bodger's Hut, if you've come before, is usually full of stuff. But Nige's plan is to clear it out so we can do work in there. That's the um, idea especially when it's raining. Well, yes. So at the moment, with the rule of six, we want to make sure that people are safe in the, the virus. So the Bodger's Hut is a really nice, safe space to work. And you get to find things like these nice whittled flowers. That Stuff that's been hidden away for years and years nice. and years. The benefits of a spring clean. <laughs> Thanks, right. team. Thank you very much. You see, so we've got the hawthorn along here, which this is coming to life. So this is one of the things you can eat hawthorn leaves when they're this Yeah, young. hawthorn leaves. They're related to apples, hawthorns. And the leaves, I think, anyway, when I used to do education days at Skeleton, I used to tell the kids to eat the hawthorn leaves. And I'm eating them at the moment. We, we used to say that they, they kind of taste like apple skin. If you've ever just gotten a bit Ooh. of apple skin, they taste similar to that. That sort of mm. not overly planty. But yeah, they're, I mean, they're beautiful. They go on quite a lot of old English salads use. Beech leaves as well are really nice. Leaves. Beech yep. leaves at this time of year. They've kind of got this sort of sorrelly taste. That's, uh, what's the name of the flavour in that? But yeah. Oh, what have we got here? Yeah, here we go. We have some bees. Obviously, I'm not going to get in as close as we did with the bee live stream we did last summer because we're not wearing the suit because we've not got suits on i don't want to get stung um you can see at the bottom i, I don't know if you can you can see at the bottom they're all going in there's a opening there that they can crawl in and out of and they are super active so this hive became active about two three weeks ago when the first blossoms appeared on the blackthorn trees we'll have a look at one of them in a minute it's a pretty classic blossom tree of blackthorn when we show you you'll uh you'll know you'll know it definitely um but yeah so these bees i can see with my eyes unfortunately the camera can't pick it up but on their back legs 
their pollen sacs are full to the brim. So they're getting a really nice early start and they'll be packing that beehive. So all those full. dandelions we've got. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, the beekeeper came the other day and they said, well, they, I don't know what they said, but they, they came the other day to clear out the hive and getting it ready for this year, making sure that everything was top notch. Oh, what so is just going to do, here? yeah. So we've had a bit of work done on Monday. We've started rearranging the compost bays, but I'm just doing a quick stop by here to say, a lot of the time during winter, because the, with the cold weather, your compost slows right down. But now's really the time of year that all the microbes, all the worms, all the little critters are going to really speed up the process of breaking down your compost, and it'll happen much quicker. So if your compost hasn't done anything over winter, you've built your compost heap in autumn, and you've been like, but it's not breaking down. Now's the time of year that this really speeds up. And yeah, you can see we've actually, we've, well, I don't know how easy it'll be to tell for people familiar on the ca camera, but we've done a lot of work clearing this, and this is all going to get redone in the next mm -hmm. few weeks. Oh, it's just all so nice. My mouth tastes like apple peel now. Yeah. <laughs> Come, oh, so we've got the wood anemone. Oh, yeah. Okay. We go this way. So this is a wood anemone here. You see these in garden centres a lot for sale. Um, they're beautiful. Uh, you get lots of different varieties, lots of different types. Yeah. But this is a good sort of wild type um, woodland floor. So that's something naturally like so we've looked at the daffodils and we've looked at all of these things that come out in this early time of year and a lot of them come from bulbs so you plant the bulbs or the root rhizome of them so anemone comes from a rhizome i think but you get them at this time of year and they grow up they don't grow from seeds they grow from these tubers and these early flowering early producing things from tubers and um bulbs they're evolved to come out so if we look up the leaves aren't on the trees yet they are just sort of starting to come out on the lower ones on the but they're very new they're very fresh and actually yes there's a lot of sky still there's a lot of light still coming through so the woodland floor at this time of year gets most of its light whereas in summer it will get really quite dense and it won't get very much light here so all of these things that come from tubers and bulbs are evolved to come out before the leaves come on the trees so they grow they get the leaves up they take in all the energy they store it in their roots and then they come back the following year so that's sort of a thing about all these woodland floor things they start they come very early in the year you'll struggle if you've got a leafy shad shaded garden a lot of these things are the things that you'll get the most productivity from speaking of things that come from bulbs <laughs> Yum, 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 yum. Shall we find a good patch? Oh, this is. I good. mean, it's all a good patch. Well, isn't I mean, it? yeah, so the floor here, if I look, look around, this path here. you can see the floor is absolute. it's a vibrant green colour. And it's because of this, one of my favourite springtime plants. And I think the smell of this is like you may you smell it out in the woods and you might be familiar with it. Why does this, sm why does this wood smell so delicious? Mm. And that's because this is wild garlic. It is amazing. So the leaves of this, you can stir fry them. You can, you can even like freeze them like you would spinach, mm, and make then pesto out of them. Yeah, they're. I mean, the oh, I the oils in them are very pungent. Like, I think a leaf of this is just as pungent as a clove. <laughs> like, mm. it's, the smell is amazing. As soon as you fry it though, or cook it, it does lose its potency very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's best to put in at the end of a recipe. So, yeah on top or if you've got any oil store some of the leaves in oil and then mm. drizzle some of the oil on sort of like spinach that you yeah. add it at a similar stage to spinach where mm. it just sort of quickly bash cooks you can also ferment it so if you crush it you can make it in a way like sauerkraut and that preserves it really well and it's just delicious i mean i love this time of year i just love being able to walk through the woods so you don't oh, i should have got a spade i don't know if we can dig out one of the bulbs so if you are harvesting it you only harvest the leaves it's actually illegal to dig mm -hmm. up the roots of a wildflower we can do that unless it, you have the permission of the landowner so we are the landowner here oh it looks almost like it's so i don't know if we can get any of the bulbs i think these might be too low down mm -hmm. yeah should have got a spade we, we might put a picture on yeah so um, they've just got sort of one little clove at the bottom they're not like the sort of broken up cloves of 
garden, gar your garden variety garlic. But yeah, it's all too deep. But you can see they're even producing the flowers already. Oh yeah, there you go. I was looking for some of that. So they come up on mass with these beautiful smelling leaves, and then in a few weeks' time, they'll have all these beautiful flowers that come out. And they are, I mean, they're beautiful white flowers. Um, and then they go. Like, it's, it's a flash in the pan, wild garlic, really. Oh, well, like... you can flash them in the pan. You can, <laughs> you can batter them, and then if you dip them in batter, and you can fry them, like, shallow oh, fry them. Amazing. You can make little wild garlic fritters. You can do it with elderflowers as well. Mm, oh, yeah, elderflower fritters are amazing. I think everyone, if you're an avid gin drinker, elderflower is probably one of your most favourite flavours. Um, elderflower is amazing. That's not... We don't have any here, I don't think. Um, mm, that's no. also a, a bit later on. Um, but here you go. We've got a woodland pond at the moment. You can see that it's quite green and murky. It's got a lot of algae in because of all the sunlight. So it's usually got a lot of tree cover. But you can see this sort of gap here between the trees. There used to be a tree there that grew up and covered that. So it, this came, pond... it fell in one of the storms. So we've had to take that tree out. So this is the first time I, re I reckon this pond has experienced this high level of light. In a fair before. while, yeah. Um, and under these here, one of our colleagues, Anne, had the absolute genius idea of covering the frog spawn with these hanging baskets because some neighbouring ducks decided to come and start gobbling it up. Slurpy, slurpy, slurpy. Take my word for it, there is frog spawn underneath these hanging baskets which will be hatching soon because mm -hmm. frog spawn comes in sort of late winter doesn't it so it's been there a couple of weeks so we will be getting the tadpoles that is definitely soon. a sign of spring tadpoles. i mean there's just the water there's so is... much life down there i yeah. don't know if you can see it if you get down there it's just oh i can't see what they are quite but there's just, the whole water surface is just under the water is just moving with all these this oh wildlife. yeah, so they will be cyclops, which uh, yeah. that's like a common name for. Um, Is it Daphnia? Yes, Daphnia. That's it. So they've got one massive red eye, which is why they're called cyclops. You obviously the camera's not wanting to show, but if you if you're someone that likes going fishing and then you eat the fish that you catch, if you catch trout, their stomach sometimes will be full of like grit, and it will be. Thousands and thousands, well, millions of those cyclops, because that's what they eat. And here we go. As promised, this is a black form, uh, black thorn in blossom. Yeah, I mean, beautiful. It's... Like we need, we need Mount Fuji in the background. <laughs> like that beautiful bright white blossom. Come down here as well and see where these ferns are opening up, where they've got these sort of fractal patterns in that are. Oh, There's just something yeah. so satisfying about looking at these shapes. I've always thought ferns look like, if, if any plant came from an alien world, it would be the fern. Like, oh, it's it's also, I, 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 I more think, like, you can imagine just sort of being oh, surrounded by dinosaurs. Yeah. Exactly. I often imagine that I'm surrounded by dinosaurs. <laughs> but, like, I mean, they smell it. The smell, it just smells like forest, doesn't yeah. it? It just oh, feels... Yeah. Yeah. Look at these guys back here where they're just... And you can see these are really upright at the moment. They're just sort of coming out. They're just unfurling. These guys down here, you can kind of see the stages. So they come up and they unfurl out like this and then they'll sort of gradually drop down and then die back. You can kind of see the remains of the stuff that died back last year. But yeah, it just smells like woodland. Ah, <laughs> oh, this... The fertilities out here, they're just... So yeah, we have a few different types here. There's one here, I'm gonna watch where I'm stepping, is a white one. So we've got the sort of pinky purpley one and then a white one there, which is amazing. Like, they're really beautiful. They're really flowers. delicate flowers as well. So like on a, if when you get this hot weather and they're still hot, still, I don't know, this one just seems particularly good. I don't know why, it just seems particularly noble in structure mm. yeah they so 
Ah, oh, I'm just looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they're just, they, they break really quickly, though. So we're just so lucky to have this many and to see this many that are out at the moment. Mm -hmm. I mentioned the hot, the compost. It's the sort of year where you can start, the things that were hibernating have come out, are coming out of hibernation now, that you can start working on replacing the uh, hedgehog boxes that need replacing. Um, we can start doing that because the hedgehogs won't be sleeping in them anymore. You can start turning your compost because the compost, anything that was hibernating in it shouldn't be hibernating it anymore. And so while you can't start cutting your hedge now because you might disturb nesting birds, there's a lot of things that you can start doing at ground level that you couldn't do before. There's also a lot of things... Um, that you can plant so if you're a grower of things in your garden be it veg or flowers this is the time of year that just most things you can sow in april and may like you might get we were talking a little bit about um if when things go to seed things go to flower it gets called bolting which is where you've got salads and things and they send up a shoot and you do get more of that at this time of year so yeah, this time of year where we're between the equinox, which is when spring starts, and the solstice, which is where the it's the shortest night and the longest day in June. That's when you're most likely to get things going to seed. But you can be you can start sowing everything and things where they say successional sowing. You can just sow your radishes, your salads every two weeks, and you can just have a constant supply all through. I feel like there's not really much point me saying what what do you plan in april because the list's just so long yeah so if you take anything from this live stream i would like it to be that you find oh, a you nice place somewhere near your house you can go on a walk or you can go and have a sit down somewhere maybe in some woods or just at a park with some greenery and really just Go and appreciate spring because, especially with the weather like this, this week, I think next week's going to be a bit cooler. Um, so, yeah, find a, a safe space where you can be safely away from people. But go and, yeah, I think the word mindfulness gets talked a lot about nowadays. And personally, I think, for me, anyway, what works is being out in nature. Um, and going on walks and just finding a nice area and just really taking it in, not listening to any music, just listening to the bird song and really looking at all of the natural structures. Yeah, I am hoping just, that you can hear some of the bird song amazing. that we've got going in the background because the birds are just chattering away. Yeah, yeah they've been really quite loud today. So, uh, we've got the cars as well, but I'm hoping you're picking up the bird song that we've got around us. Mm -hmm. had a wren shouting at me at my allotment yesterday. <laughs> They're, so, they're such they're the tiny little birds. They're like really, really small, but they've got that really sticky up tail at the back, and they're just absolutely diddy. But they are so loud, they're so shouty. We <laughs> they're how, the did, how did tiny little birds like that make kitchens? <laughs> oh, mushrooms are. Let's, oh, wow. oh, we did, we didn't we didn't look go. at the moss, did we? Oh yeah, so because it's not all about plants. We've got the fungus as well. You can see these are dying. So these are dead. So mushrooms, they are very short-lived. These ones have done their job. They've come up, they've spread their spores, and then now they're starting to die, which is fine. That's natural. That's what they do. Brilliant. <sighs> so I mean, as I'm... we come out of Logopolis, I think, well, we can see on the other side, there's a stretch of outdoor space that you can use that's the yeah, canal go, path go for a walk along the canal or ride a bike or you know the the canal is accessible for wheelchairs now so you can always go for an outing on the, the canal yeah i think should we finish on some daffodils yeah Hold on. so thank you very much for joining us today it's, we will be next week going down to near doncaster where we'll be doing some last um tree planting for the season so it's the end of the season when you can plant trees so if you oh yeah this is stinging nettles should say this is the best time of year to eat stinging nettles as well mm. make sure you're wearing gloves when you pick them put them in a colander pour a, boil, a kettle of boiling water over the top of them and that makes them easier to handle 
and you can make great soups with them. They're really, really high in iron. They're really nutritious it, and it, vitamin K, I think, as well. I mean, I, we've mentioned spinach before, but if there was a plant we should have mentioned spinach for, it's definitely nettles. Like, it is mm. pretty much, if you don't have spinach, but you've got a big patch of nettles, it's a good substitute. Like, it's, it's very really, similar. Well, it's, a, it's, much, it's much higher in a lot of the good things that are in mm. spinach. It's a really nutritious vegetable. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope mm -hmm. the sound quality has been a little bit better for people that have been struggling to hear us in some of the other live streams. I think that's everyone. Um, I don't think yeah. if, you, if you have been struggling, don't feel singled out because even when I'm watching them back, um, I was getting frustrated with the sound. But now, fingers crossed and touch wood, everything. Touch trees. <laughs> everything should sound OK. Brilliant. Yeah. So I hope I've you've been... enjoyed your walk around Hollybush Garden. Yeah. I've been Alex. And I've been Freya. Thank you very much for joining us. Same place, same time next week, Wednesday at 11 a.m. Goodbye. Goodbye.